Greetings students and welcome back to my third lesson on variational calculus. In this video I'm going to take a very quick detour and derive a very special rule in calculus of variations called the Beltrami identity. We'll begin by supposing that we have two points A and B, given by x1, y1, and x2, y2 respectively. What we want to do is find some function of x that makes the following functional, or function of functions, stationary. We already know from the previous video that we can find this function f of x using the Euler-Lagrange equation, which is just a differential equation that looks like this. The partial of f with respect to y minus the derivative of partial f partial y prime with respect to x equals zero. Now the Beltrami identity is a special case that comes from the Euler-Lagrange equation, and it applies when our capital F, the quantity inside the integrand of the functional, does not explicitly depend on x. In other words, its partial derivative with respect to x is zero. So let's go ahead and derive the Beltrami identity. I'm going to just copy-paste the Euler-Lagrange equation for our quick reference here. The first thing in this derivation that I'm going to do is multiply both sides of Euler-Lagrange by y prime. The resulting equation I'll call equation one. Now, in general, in general, this capital F is generally a function of x, y, and y prime. In addition, y and y prime themselves are also both functions of x. So what we can do is write an expression for the total derivative of capital F with respect to x. This total derivative can be written in terms of the partial derivatives using the chain rule. And in this case, df dx would then just be the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of f with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is just y prime, plus the partial of f with respect to y prime times the derivative of y prime with respect to x, which is just y double prime. Let's go ahead and isolate the second term, this partial f partial y times y prime. Let's isolate the second term and move everything else to the other side of the equation. The resulting expression I'm going to call equation two. Interestingly enough, this exact same quantity, the y prime times partial f partial y that I just isolated, also appears in equation one. So what we're going to do is substitute equation two into equation one, and here's what we'll end up with. I'm just going to take the negative common from the last two terms. Now this expression in the brackets can be simplified. Do you know how? I'll give you a hint. Use the product rule. And if you did use the product rule, or more precisely the reverse of the product rule, you'll realize that this expression in the brackets is just d dx of y prime times partial f partial y prime. Let's now move this partial f partial x to the right hand side. And let's take the derivative term with respect to x, the d by dx, common from the left hand side. Now when this capital F, that was the integrand in our functional, when this capital F has no explicit dependence on x, then its partial with respect to x is just zero, as we said earlier. So if we integrate both sides with respect to x, we will end up with capital F minus y prime times partial capital F partial y prime equals our constant of integration c. And this equation is the Beltrami identity. Usually we make use of it when our capital F does not explicitly depend on the independent variable. And it will come in handy in future videos, especially in the one where I solve the brachistochrome problem, which should hopefully be out soon. Anyway, that should do it for this very short lecture. I'd just like to finish off by thanking my patrons Jacob Soares and Jennifer Heffman for donating at the $5 level or higher to my Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, I've put a link to my Patreon account in the description, and you can support me there if you wish. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.